Hey, what is going on YouTube? Yes, different angle, different look. This Target t-shirt I bought for an audition for a role that I didn't get. Now, if you guys have been noticing and you've been on my channel, I've just kind of been doing random things and specifically, I've been answering a lot of questions that you've been asking that I haven't had the time to do before. Well, I'm taking the time to answer your questions and one of the biggest questions that I've been getting is, what type of equipment should I buy if I wanted to get into filmmaking and or being a serious YouTuber? Now, that question in and of itself is a very difficult question to answer because it really depends on how much money you have, the budget, and what you want to do. But today, I'm going to give you a quick setup of a camera and two lenses that you need to shoot just about anything that you want in terms of short film, vlogging, whatever you want on this platform. There's a camera that I just bought today. Now with this camera, I have been waiting for it for maybe about two years because the first iteration was amazing in and of itself. It was revolutionary. A lot of people bought it and a lot of people still use it today but they fixed a lot of the shit that I hated on it before, and I'm talking about, motherfucker, the Panasonic GH5. Yeah! Oh, motherfucker, I've been waiting for this for years! This bad boy is what I call the future of filmmaking. Now, I'm not gonna go into tech specifics about this camera because most of you motherfuckers out there could really give a shit less. And I understand it because I don't give a fuck either. But let me just give you a reason why this camera is absolutely amazing. Now, this camera right here is gonna roughly run you about $1,900 to $2,000. Yes, it's pricey, but relative to what it can do and how long this is gonna last for you on this platform is worth every fucking penny. Now let's talk about the physical aspects of this camera. Number one, this camera feels amazing. It's good in the hands, the grip is really comfortable, and when you start to shoot a lot, you will start to realize how important it is to have a comfortable camera. If it fits well in your hands, you will be able to jack on it. You will be able to shoot for a long time without complaining, without griping. Conversely, I also shoot with two Sony mirrorless cameras, and those bodies are smaller, and it's great because it's compact, but it's not great for shooting per se because it's very uncomfortable in my hands. My hands are a little bit larger, and so it's, it's kind of hard for me to jostle around and it makes my hand cramp up a lot. The second amazing thing about this camera, aside from the fact that the body feels great, it has a fully tilting, extendable, variable screen. This right here is going to be your light saber. Light saber, I said saber, bitch! Why you ask? Because for those of you out there that want to get into the vlogging game where you want to film your beautiful fucking face, well guess what? What better way than having a variable screen? Also, if you're filming yourself in multiple different characters, well guess what? If you need to find focus or you need to see that the frame is right, you have the screen out for you so you could check it yourself and you don't need somebody else to tell you that you're in focus. Also, did I mention this camera has great autofocus capabilities, which means that when you're shooting yourself, you don't have to worry about the focus going all out of whack because the video autofocus will do that for you. Another thing that this camera does, which a lot of cameras do now too, is that it shoots 4K. It's not necessary, but it helps. When you're shooting something and sometimes you wanna snap zoom or you wanna focus on different things or you don't wanna grab a different shot to get it close because it's just gonna be a simple sketch. Well, guess what? If you have it in 4K and you're downscaling your resolution out to 1080p anyways, well, if you blow up the picture, it'll still be in great resolution. The image will still be sharp because it's a 4K fucking footage and if you upscale it a little bit, it'll be fine. A, saves you a lot of time. For you filmmakers out there that do want to go into coloring, this does have a flat picture profile. It's called V-Log, I believe. And it shoots 422 10-bit internally. Yes, you don't need an external recorder to get that 422 10-bit, son. For those people out there who don't know what it is, I'm not gonna sit here and explain it to you because it's a waste of time. And most likely, once again, you don't give a fuck. This camera also has image stabilization. Have you seen those old YouTube clips when you were shooting it and the camera was super shaky and it was just weird and just very jarring? Well, guess what? When you have image stabilization, it's gonna help out a lot with that, which the Sony's have as well. Panasonic has it as well. Awesome, thank you very much. I love the fact this has a lot of hardware buttons. Hardware buttons are very important to me because when I'm shooting, I want to access my things as soon as possible. This has no problem of that whatsoever. A lot of customizable buttons, super easy to access your ISO, your white balance, your aperture, everything else. Next up, let's talk about lenses. Now, one of the things that people tend to fuck up on when they start shooting is that they think that they need a lot of lenses. You really don't need that many. 
And even if you're not shooting sketches, some of my favorite uh, DPs and videographers that shoot like travel videos that I follow, they really only use about two or three lenses. And the two lenses that I bought for this camera and the ones that I use when I travel are going to be a wide zoom and one prime lens. The wide zoom that I got for my Panasonic is going to be the Panasonic Lumix G Vario 7 to 14. Now this camera is a micro four thirds sensor. So basically what that means is that whatever you see to be the focal length on this lens is going to be times two. So this camera is actually a 14 to 28. Now wide angle closes are going to be a preference for you. If you don't like it, that's all up to you. It's just what I like for my taste. So bada bing bada boom, shit adapa. It's not even words. The second lens that I got for my Panasonic is the 25 mil, but after conversion, roughly about a 50 mil 1.4. The reason why I love this lens so much and it's the preferred prime that I like to use is because the focal length is decent. A 50 mil is always something that you should have on hand. Um, and on top of that, it's super light, it's compact, it's not gonna get in the way. And if you're doing travel videography, you want to pack light. So this is what it is, people. This is my general camera setup. I don't have a lot of things. Well, that's not true. I do have a lot of equipment. Like I said, A7S II, A7R II, I even have an FS5. But here's the thing, I have 20 lenses, I only use about two. So if you're thinking out there right now that you need to buy like a stupid amount of lenses to get great shots, you don't. And I, I want to dry this in for you right now, just so you don't waste money in the future. It's not really so much about the equipment to a certain extent. I'm gonna use this as an example just to drive this point. You guys remember that uh, app called Vine? Well, all that stuff was shot on an iPhone camera, basically. It didn't require amazing or expensive equipment, and it didn't require multiple lenses. It required thought, writing and understanding like comedic timing and beats. This is just a tool that'll enhance already the content that you can put out. Now, if you don't have like roughly about 3,500 bucks to afford these two lenses and this camera and a couple of batteries, well, you're not, it's not the end of the world. There are other options that don't shoot 4K or even does shoot 4K that's cheaper that is very comparable to this. But this is my personal setup that I like that I will be keeping for a very long time that I will be shooting a majority of my things on for maybe the next four or five years. Don't ever let your equipment be a reason why you are not creating content. That shit is just bullshit and excuses. Like I said, the people that I follow, that I look up to use about two or three lenses when they do these quick shoots and their stuff looks absolutely amazing. And that's because of their thought process and the things that they create. They don't let equipment and money get in their way and neither should you. When I first started doing YouTube, I shot on this little Panasonic like zoom toggle like HD thing that my dad had. I mean, it, it was anything that I could get my hands on. People watch this stuff because the content was good, not the camera. But once again, if you are looking to buy something that'll last you for a while, take my advice and try this out. Bitch! Look at this upward angle. Extra double chin, extra titty, look at me. Nobody wants to do me. Maybe right in my little belly crevices. You wanna see something cool? I kinda hold snacks in my flaps. Hey, what is going on YouTube? I hope you like that unboxing video. If you wanna see me unbox shit, like cool new equipment, tech, I can do it in the Davis So way because most people when they do these unboxing videos, they're not fucking entertaining for shit. <laughs> I can even unbox the weirdest things for you and try them out and use them on this video. Leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you want me to unbox. Let me know if you want me to do another mukbang. I can do articles, whatever you guys like. I'm here for you. I'm just having fun with my YouTube. I've been on this channel for like five years now. It's time to have fun and connect with you. Who's calling me?